So as you can see, I have changed the background from previous episode because I moved B3 to the outside of the lagoon. And this is just amazing. Every morning when I sit on my swim platform, I have my morning coffee. There's a sea turtle coming up, breaking the surface, almost like saying good morning, hello. And it's, I don't know how to explain this. It's, it's just unbelievable. It was a little bit busy inside the lagoon and a lot of big cargo ships arriving to pick up other sailboats so it was time to relocate. One of the cool things with my previous location was all the interesting and fun things happening around me all the time. Who needs TV or Netflix when being in a busy place like this? Capsizing boats, man overboard, flipping jet skis and much more. And of course now and then there are boats going on the wrong side of the channel markers and touching the reefs if you pay a little attention on what's going on around you. In this video I just want to share with you an example of uh, how you can do a classic mistake with the eyeball navigation. It's so easy to do that mistake and I've seen it so many times. Not only here in the Caribbean but also back home because it's, it's so classical. Which of course can happen to anyone. And even with experience it's possible to do mistakes, especially in a crowded place that can be busy and your focus is in front of you and not on your chart. There is a saying that the best way of navigation in shallow water is eyeball navigation. Especially if you have the sun at your back you will easily spot a difference in water colors as you can see here. However, if you don't have the sun in your back and rely only on what you see in front of you, it's a few classic mistakes you easily could make. I will take you with me up in the air to give you a better understanding with this bird's view. And I have put on a layer to show you the reefs and the lateral buoys marking this channel. The map here is very accurate and also well marked. The challenge can be to relate this to the real world. Seeing all these sailboats and even a big yacht on anchor could give you an impression that it's lots of deep water ahead of you. If you ignore the green buoy clearly telling you where to go, you would see my overlay here showing it's really no shortcut out of here and even the boat wreck is on the map as well. As I already showed you the blueprint it now seems unlikely that someone would do this mistake in navigation. But he's not the first to do this mistake and my experience from back home is this one is a classic. I have even done similar myself long time ago. But his next moves and choices is a bit disturbing and even surprising. He should seriously look at the map and understand giving more throttle would not make him pass this reef. Most likely the keels on this catamaran only get some scratches. However the fragile part is the tiny rudders and the exposed sail drives. Giving throttle forward trying to climb over this reef was not the best idea here. He was even giving more and more throttle but there was no way he could pass the reef. Finally giving up and trying to back out again. So I mean everyone can do a mistake. Uh, if you run aground the first thing you should do is to inspect your boat. Make sure that you have no damage that can be even worse. So like in this case he could easily drop the anchor, he could even tie up to a mooring ball or he haul out at the shipyard that was only 300 meters away. In this case I would open the engine hatches at the stern where you can inspect sail drives and rudders. I would even go inside checking for waters before going off the reef. So just continuing pretending like nothing happened and just hammer down the throttle, that's it's only one word for it. It's stupid. Maybe a bit hard to call him stupid, but definitely not a wise choice. Every skipper do mistakes, but it's how you deal with it that defines you as a skipper. A wild guess from my side, this skipper was not the owner of this 1 million euro cat. Back to where I started this episode, leaving the lagoon, moving to the outside. Keep on, no matter come one may. Some say, live and let him live, you care enough to be free. Keep on, no matter come one may. Some say, misery loves a little good company. But what I need is to fly high away. Oh, oh, oh. 
when I said moving to the outside of the lagoon, it means in the bay outside of St. Anne. So I'm still anchored in Marnik as I have scheduled refitting on all standing rigging. The previous episode I told you it was locked down again, and it's kind of. As you can see there is not many people here now, however the stores and workshops are all business as usual, only bars and restaurants that's closed to public. I was a bit worried about the new lockdown, so the good news is this will not affect my scheduled refitting on the rigging. Meanwhile I have this beautiful beach in front of me and I'm anchored out here with lots of other sailors. But the best part is the view I have from my stern that's infinity with stunning sunsets. So there is actually not much going on. I mean, uh, I'm almost a little bit bored. <laughs> I don't have any projects. Yeah, you hear me right. I mean, my to-do list is checked out. Uh, I don't have any projects going on. There is actually surprisingly nothing wrong with my boat. It's totally mint condition everywhere. I'm only waiting for the the rig, uh, the refitting of the rig, it's not even necessary to do yet uh, because the boat is not that old. But I know it's gonna be need to be done within two years from now, and then I'm in the Pacific. And as I point out in previous episode, I think it's better to be ahead of schedule. So maybe it's like this cliche. I mean, if you think everything is okay with the boat, uh, it just means that you haven't discovered yet what's wrong and um, hopefully not <laughs> so but uh, so far so good I mean uh, I've been doing some small stuff reorganizing my lockers trying to uh, yeah one of my uh, cabins looks a little bit messy it's like I mean sometimes I was thinking like wow I should have bigger boats uh, because all my sails are kind of stored here and there uh, but then again, if you have a bigger boat, you need even bigger sails, and then you have bigger problems again. So I think this is kind of an eternity uh, dance. So I've been struggling a bit with uh, um, the cell phone connection. Uh, the the Digicel has been little by like not that reliable lately. Um, luckily, I have the the blue uh, uh, Kuwork office where Hanna works. And I'm gonna borrow uh, the Wi-Fi there again, so I can upload this video to you guys. Which means a dinghy ride passing these beautiful sceneries, and a long ride all the way through Le Marine into the marina. If you are a digital nomad or kind of a YouTuber, this place is great. Super fast Wi-Fi and air condition. And of course, while being here, I take the advantage of downloading tons of music at the same time. Staring out the windows, getting restless, as all I wanna do right now is to go sailing. Even though it's like being anchored in a gigantic swimming pool, I can't help it, I just feel a strong desire of going out on the big blue again. Hopefully in just 2-3 to three weeks from now. So there is not so much more to say than uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And uh, as usual, cheers from Be Free. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care, all the best. Cheers.
sing 